Well, I think it's like, it's over, you know, as far as I'm concerned. SpaceX has these thousands of satellites. Amazon's about to put up 14,000 satellites of their own. OneWeb is a company sort of quasi-based in Europe. They're doing the same thing. This percentage of sort of computing that was up there has already tilted so far towards the commercial side. And, and so all these rules that have existed for like 60, 70, 70 years, these boundaries, this the like status quo of, of you know, how we knew this was supposed to operate. Welcome to Big Technology Podcast, a show for cool-headed, nuanced conversation of the tech world and beyond. Our guest today is Ashley Vance. He is the author of When the Heavens Went on Sale, The Misfits and Geniuses Racing to Put Space Within Reach. He's also the author of Elon Musk. He hosts the show Hello World, and he is a feature writer at Bloomberg Business Week. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So we're here to talk about your new book, When the Heavens Went on Sale, and I just want to let you know and let listeners know that this is a, a new new territory for us, not quite space here on Big Technology Podcast, but we're in the frontier because basically I decided that when, you know, every book, for those who don't know, every book comes out on a Tuesday, we typically do our flagship interview on Wednesday, and I kept getting, like, becoming second uh, from all the shows that would release on Pub Day, so new rule here on the on the show when we have a new book and we do the interview that will come out on tuesdays now instead of wednesday so we'll move it up and then we'll return to our regularly scheduled programming you know the week after so ashley want to say thank you for helping me trial this out i'm and, honored to be yeah, part of ahead. your master plan <laughs> thank you and hopefully uh unlike uh, the early spacex missiles it won't go up in flames <laughs> on the way into the atmosphere <laughs> You know, so, uh, just be first when you can be first, man. I'm I'm all for it. Exactly. Well, that's cool. Um, enjoy, I really enjoyed the book. I think there's a lot to talk about here. I think that the best place to start is actually where you started off the book. And the book doesn't really focus as much as I expected on SpaceX. And we'll get, off, get into that, you know, as we go through this conversation. But I think we should talk about the innovation that SpaceX had because... You know, I think that a lot of people see it as this company that Elon Musk founded to show he could go to space and just think that it like actually does, you know, space, uh, you know, rockets the same way that everybody else people might know that they land and they come out. But actually, that's not really like the, the core innovation uh, as far as, you know, I came away from reading your book. You want to talk a little bit about how SpaceX really changed the game? Yeah, yeah. You know, like you said in the book, I mean, we kick off with SpaceX and then kind of move away from it. But it was really important to me because um, it's a funny thing. You know, we think of space as this sci-fi, very modern sort of thing. But, but you know, <laughs> if you actually uh, pay attention to the industry, I mean, it, 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 it kind of like got going big gangbusters style in the 1960s and it like didn't really change. The rockets were the same. Um, like NASA, the government run space programs, the military contractors did not embrace modern computing technology. They used all this sort of like ancient specialized stuff that had been certified for space. And so, you know, it was just this, like, it was this industry that was like kind of caught in, in, a, in a time warp, you know, and a, right. This whole idea of space grade, like you need space grade material. It's almost just like, is it, is it really that you need space grade material or do you need to just pay the contractors who created this term yeah, so like, that they they get the contracts get inflated for people who don't know we're talking about stuff as simple as something like a radio where i'm sure in the 1960s or 70s you probably did need a space grade radio to survive the rigors of the launch and the, the conditions in space but then once they and then once they certified this this radio as being good for the job nobody ever wanted to try anything ever again and and run 